Cats have a nice little 9-1-4 record as they head for the final games before the midway break. Hi, I'm Phil Kincaid for the Friends of UNH Women's Hockey, and welcome to this week in UNH Women's Hockey, along, as always, with head coach Brian McCloskey. And I think, as you said, coach, you'd be pretty happy with a 9-1-4 record, you know, looking in, going to start out the season, but it hasn't been an easy time. Uh, you've had a battle some real tough teams, and you've also had a battle injuries and flu and mononucleosis and it's been tough to get any real traction yeah it has but I, and I think on top of that the league uh, the, all the leagues uh, have uh, gotten more difficult or more competitive more parity as we've said many times and so uh, every game's a battle um, we, you know we've had to fight our share of adversity I've been uh, Surprised at uh, some of our resilience, uh, given some of the, some of the things we've had to deal with. But uh, I mean, like you said, overall, I, you know, I don't know that we've hit a stride uh, what what we're capable of. But we've played some good hockey in spots. We've obviously played not some not so good, uh, but we've been able to get better uh, over the course of the first month and a half here. And now we're heading into some big games uh, late November. Uh, pre-Christmas and uh, league, a uh, couple league contests in particular. And, uh, you know, it'll be, these will be important games uh, as we get ready for break. You, know, you look at the stat sheet, there's one thing that stands out pretty clearly, and that is that the majority of your production is coming from your top line. Uh, Kelly Patton, Michaela Long, uh, Christine Horn. Uh, of course, Long, as you mentioned before, Long and Patton, are, they're like, you can't separate them. They're just always together. I guess the challenge now is how do you broaden that scoring out to the rest of the uh, lines? Well, I think that's our challenge, is can we get a little more balance in our offense? Uh, you know, I think uh, Christine Lavoie has uh, started to put up some numbers. I think she had three points on the weekend. And... Uh, uh, you know, Kelly Cahill's chipped in as well, uh, Julie Allen, um, you know, Brittany Scudder was out with Mono, we we're hoping she was starting to come on when, uh, when uh, just prior to her getting sick. So th those are some of the kids that I, I know we can uh, get some numbers from or production from. Um, no surprise that your, you know, our veterans uh, are producing, uh, Burchard, Raylan Jingalewski from the back end. Uh, Courtney Shear is doing a great job back there. Our veterans are really have really done well for us, uh, and and up front, uh, as you noted, Patton and and Long have been uh, our sort of our catalyst. Uh, special teams have played a big role for us too in that regard, and that's probably uh, contributed to their production. So. Um, you know, we've got to find ways, though, to, to broaden the scoring, and I, I think we will as kids get more experience heading into uh, Christmas here. Joining me this week is veteran defender Courtney Sheary, who's been one of the stalwarts on the blue line for the Wildcats this season. And, and Courtney, you know, I think one of the question marks coming into the season is, you know, uh, some fresh faces on the decor and how is the team going to respond? But you guys have done very well. You've got a under two goal a game, uh, goals against average. So it looks like things have been working out pretty well for you. Um, yeah, actually, a couple of our D, we have a really young class. I mean, me, Birch, and Ray have been here for a little while, but... Um, Brock and uh, Chapel have really stepped up. I mean, Ferris has stepped up in a lot, a lot in the games too. But uh, Chapel's actually been one of our biggest D to step up there. She plays great PK. She's one of our best PKers. I mean, that's all it really is. As long as your defenseman can get it quick and understand the game better. I mean, I know it took me a while. To, so. Well, that's been one of the real strong points of the team this year is special teams play, both on the power play and on the penalty kill. And as you know, in, in both cases, the defense is a key to the success of your special teams. Yeah, I mean, really is. I mean, we've been working really hard on it. But like I said, just the f uh, fresh faces doing what they need to do and not relying on the older players all the time is great. I think the defense have been proven that all year, just having a, sh a small class, a young class. But well, you know, it's uh, almost halfway mark. you got four more games, three big Hockey East games coming up. If you take a look at the season so far, is there something that stands out to you, a positive thing about this team that really encourages you for what might happen down the road? I mean, like I said in the summer of the interview, uh, we had a small team last year and I was saying how close we got, how quickly, but 
surprisingly this year there it's been the same way I, I mean our team's very close we all look up to all of our leaders everybody's uh, as one I mean we haven't had a game yet where in the locker room any arguments or anything like that. I mean, we've all just come together, tried to figure it out. I mean, we've come out pretty slow in some periods and had a battle all the way back. And you can just tell that um, the locker room inside and out, everybody's just one for the team. Everybody wants to win. So. Well, now this weekend you're on the road to Northeastern, a big game. They're leading Hockey East right now. You have a couple games in hand, but still... You know, this is a real important match to go down there and grab a couple of points. I mean, Hockey East alone, it's huge, but um, beating at Northeastern now would be great for when we play against Fenway. I mean, we're gonna, obviously they're going to be one of our big rivals this year. Just that game alone is going to be huge, but we obviously want the two points. I mean, it's hard for us to win lately, but um, outside of our building, but hopefully I mean, we just need to get the two points. Well, you've got four more games before the holiday break. Uh, Dartmouth is one big one, but there are three big Hockey East games as well against teams that you've yet to play. Yeah. Big one on Sunday against Northeastern, a team right now that's atop the league. Yeah, and, uh, you know, much improved. Uh, Linda has done a great job in, uh, in Dave Flint's absence. Obviously, we saw David this weekend with uh, Team USA. Um, just a really solid team with uh, probably as good a goaltending as you're going to see in the country. And uh, uh, that'll be a big test for us. I mean, uh, we got to see Florence here uh, in uh, the USA Hockey East All-Star Game. And she's uh, no surprise. Everyone saw her last year. But uh, she's clearly uh, playing with a lot of confidence, uh, real athletic. And, you know, that, that's been a big part of their success. Not that uh, it's all Florence. but. But she gives them a lot of confidence back there, and uh, it'll, it'll be difficult. We're going into their building. Uh, I think they're flying high right now, and uh, as they should be. And uh, these, are, these are big points. So, yeah, the, the three remaining league games will be big for us heading into Christmas because, you know, we need to, we need to make, make up some ground on some teams. I mean, everybody seems to be getting, you know, giving points, getting points. And uh, the, those six points, uh, whether we can get all of them, some of them, whatever we can get, we'll need. Great, Coach. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week with another edition of This Week in UNH Women's Hockey.